King Dice is an interesting boss because you have to fight through a gauntlet of mini bosses before actually fighting King Dice himself. Some of these bosses are harder than others, and some may have quirks that you can exploit to handle them much easier. So, to start with your loadout, Roundabout is going to be a great versatile weapon that will work for pretty much every mini boss. It does consistent damage, and its EX is much easier to hit and more consistent as well. For your second weapon, I like using Crackshot because it serves as a great backup weapon for whenever I can't always hit with Roundabout. So with this weapon combo, you can pretty much always be dealing damage. If you don't have Crackshot, Chaser would be the direct substitute, or honestly, you can choose whatever weapon you want for this slot. This is because there are two main ways to fight King Dice, and depending on which way you want to take on the whole fight, your second weapon of choice can vary. For your super, it's ultimately up to you what you want to pick as well, since all the supers can have their use. I'd recommend using Invincibility if you have more troubles keeping your HP, and otherwise use the other supers to max out your damage. For your charm, Smoke Bomb and surprisingly Parry Sugar are great for this fight. Smoke Bomb allows you to dodge many of the attacks that the mini bosses will throw at you, and Parry Sugar is great if you're not confident with your parries overall, and hitting the dice is much easier as well. Now let's get into the boss fight. Now you can fight this in two ways, either specifically choosing the bosses you're comfortable with, or going for the bosses that will give you the extra HP that is randomized at the beginning of the fight. This will heavily depend on you as a player and how confident you are with your abilities, but the safest play overall is to pick the bosses that you know you can take on. And if you're not sure what bosses to take on, well, this segues perfectly into talking about each boss. The first boss is the Tipsy Troop. Some people find this boss quite overwhelming and complicated, but it's really a simplistic fight. The whiskey glass tilts back for a while before falling over and spilling whiskey all over the floor, and simply timing your jump is all you have to do to avoid this attack. His starting animation is very obvious and easy to time when he is going to spill over after getting familiar with the timing. The Martini Glass summons olives that fly around the top area of the screen and shoot their eye towards you. These, again, are very easy to foresee and dodge, and you can always take them out in one or two shots with a homing weapon. The Whiskey Bottle will have a small animation before opening his lid and shooting whiskey on top of the player. As you've probably noticed by now, all of their attacks are predictable and very easy to dodge. It's simply the combination of them all that may confuse amateur players. I think looking at them from a simplistic perspective will really help you defeat them easily. The second boss is Chips Bedigan. This is definitely one of the easiest mini-bosses, but can be a bit tricky if you don't play it correctly. Shoot the top of the chip stack until he initiates his attack, then back up while using Chaser slash Crackshot, if you're using it, and react to the attack. If you have Smoke Bomb, you can easily dash through the attack and make this pretty much the easiest boss fight ever. If you don't have Smoke Bomb, however, then you'll need to time your jumps well to dodge some of the attacks. For attacks that give you little room to dodge, you'll want to do a small jump by just lightly tapping the jump button and dashing to make it through. Otherwise, jump over and make sure to watch for the second wave of the attack and react accordingly. The third boss is Mr. Wheezy. There will be two ashtray platforms that Mr. Wheezy can switch to and from, and he'll blow fireballs that travel in a loop-de-loop -loop pattern. The main problem with this boss, in my opinion, is that he takes a considerable amount of time to take down. The fight lasting a lot longer than other mini-bosses increases the chance of you making more mistakes, and with the awkward loop-de-loop -loop pattern of the fireballs, they can really screw you up on accident. I try to stay far back from the fireballs and use roundabout to deal damage, jumping or moving around the fireballs. When Mr. Wheezy turns to Ash, that's when you'll want to jump and dash over to the other side. However, there are flying cigarettes that move upwards in the middle. There will be gaps in between the cigarettes, so you'll have to find an opening and jump to the other side. That's pretty much all there is to say about Mr. Wheezy. The fourth boss is Pippin Dot. These are a bit hard to fight without taking a hit if you're not already comfortable with fighting them, but after fighting them enough, they become much easier. To start off, the constantly moving floor will have spikes in some spots, so you'll have to constantly jump around the stage to the empty areas. The left side of the screen also has a spike wall, so you'll need to stay near the middle of the screen. Pippin Dot will occasionally do two attacks, either spit out a D20 that bounces around in a zigzag pattern, 
or summon a domino bird from their hat that will travel to the left side of the screen, down, then right towards the player. You can either shoot the bird to take it out, or simply dodge the bird whenever it moves towards you. This boss tests your movement skills in order to beat them, which is why a homing weapon like Chaser or Crackshot would be preferable here. I would advise using the homing weapon and focus solely on trying to dodge all the different obstacles that come at you. The fifth boss is Hopus Pocus. I would strongly advise against fighting this boss unless you're using Smoke Bomb, because these attacks are pretty ruthless if you're not familiar with them and are tough to dodge consistently. Hopus will do one of two attacks. He can summon skulls that spin around the player, and after a telegraphed cue, they close in on the player. The only way to dodge this without Smoke Bomb is to jump or dash through the small opening present, but it's not easy to do consistently, especially since it's random where the opening will be when the skulls start to close in on you. You'll want to be on top of the floating card in the middle of the screen to dodge this attack, but if you have Smoke Bomb, just time your dash as the skulls are closing in to easily dodge this attack. The second attack will summon card suits either at the top or bottom of the screen, with one pariable heart suit always. After a telegraphed cue, the card suits will travel to the opposite side of the screen. The only way to deal with this attack is to parry the heart suit and slip through that opening. You can smoke dash through this attack if you're frame perfect, but obviously that's not going to happen, so just stick with parrying to avoid this attack. Throughout this fight, you'll probably want to stand on the floating card regardless of whether you have smoke bomb or not so you can deal damage more easily with roundabout. That's pretty much all I have to say about Hopus Pocus. The sixth boss is Fear Lab. This can be a bit overwhelming at first, but with some awareness you can make it through with not much trouble. To get straight into it, the bottom of the screen will be filled with horse riders, so always try to stick to the middle of the screen to avoid running into them by accident. There will also occasionally be a ghost rider that will ride across the bottom of the screen until it meets the player's position, then it launches upwards to hit the player. You'll need to pay attention to when the ghost rider is getting close to you, so you can then dodge accordingly when it launches upwards. Fearlap himself will shoot out a blue present that travels for a random amount of time before exploding and shooting horseshoes in all eight directions. The randomness of the present's location can throw you off at first, but just being aware of everything that you need to worry about makes it easier to pay attention to the things that are important. That is made a bit harder though, with the foreground constantly blocking your vision. Just hold your shoot button and pay attention for when the Ghost Rider is near and when the presents are moving towards you. That's pretty much it. The seventh boss is Pyroletta. She is definitely one of the easiest mini bosses in the game, but a bit confusing if you don't know what to do. She'll dance around the stage at random intervals, and you'll need to dodge her constantly to not get hit. There are chips floating in the middle of the screen that you can parry to stand on top of them for a short amount of time, so it's important to parry them only when she's about to start moving towards you. After some dancing, she'll stop and start twirling in place, and roulette balls will fall from the top of the screen. They'll start falling from both sides of the screen and then meet in the middle. There will be a brief opening during this part, so you'll have to find the opening and stand in it to dodge the attack. Now all of this is assuming you are not using Smoke Bomb, but if you are, then this is literally as easy as dodging through Pyroletta's legs whenever she's dancing around, and dodging through the roulette balls whenever they're falling down. This boss fight couldn't be easier with Smoke Bomb, which is why I highly advise bringing it for this fight. The 8th boss is by far the hardest mini-boss in the game, and you really shouldn't even bother fighting him. But if you are going to anyways, the boss is Mangosteen. <laughs> Jokes aside, this boss is by far the easiest mini-boss out of them all since you don't need to use anything but a simple weapon to take out Mangosteen. Mangosteen stays in the middle of the screen and occasionally shoots out an orb towards you that you simply dodge. There are also pull chalks that will bounce around the stage. That's literally it. There is one quirk about the boss fight that most people might have not noticed. There are three different colors of pull chalks that will bounce around, an orange, purple, and teal chalk. The orange chalk jumps the lowest, so it doesn't go too far horizontally. The purple chalk bounces slightly higher and thus travels across the screen faster as well. The teal one jumps the highest and covers the most amount of the screen. This could be important to know, so you will then know when you need to move for the different colors of the chalk. If the teal chalk is on screen, you'll have to make sure you dodge it sooner than the orange chalk, for example. 
Other than that, just shoot Mangosteen, Super, and DX, and just pay attention and this should be a cakewalk. The last mini boss is Mr. Chimes. I don't even want to bother explaining this because you should genuinely never try to fight Mr. Chimes, like ever. He takes way too long to fight and way too difficult to do without messing up, especially for an S rank attempt. To quickly summarize this fight, you're playing a game of memory with the cards shown. They'll be shown briefly at the beginning of the fight with symbols on them, then flip over, thus the name of the game, Memory. You'll have to match pairs of cards that have the same symbol. He'll bounce around the stage inactive until you match a pair of cards, and mismatching a pair will cause him to move around faster. Matching a pair will cause him to start attacking, smashing his symbols together and sending musical notes in six directions. After taking enough damage, he'll become inactive again and you rinse and repeat matching pairs until you take him out. Now that it's explained, I can safely say to not ever fight this boss. It is a waste of time, and simply picking either Pirouletta or Mangosteen, which are both some of the easiest mini bosses, is just objectively better. Now that we've finally gone over each boss, you can now decide which bosses from each section that you want to fight against. My recommendations for what bosses to fight are dependent on whether you have Smoke Bomb or not. If you are using Smoke Bomb, then I'd fight Chips Bedigan since you can simply dash through his attacks, Hopus Pocus since you can dash through the Skull attack and just parry the Heart Suit during the second attack, and Pirouletta since you can dodge everything she does. This lineup is extremely easy and shouldn't take more than a few attempts to get to the end consistently. If you're not using Smoke Bomb, then it's definitely more of a personal preference, so I'm going to tell you who I would not personally fight against to get the S rank. For the first section, Mr. Wheezy just takes a lot of time and is much easier to make mistakes on than the other two bosses before him. I'd stick to either Chips Bedigan or the Tipsy Troop for the first section. I'd 100% avoid a Hopus Pocus if you're not using Smoke Bomb, because with the speed that Hopus casts his attacks on Expert and the awkwardness of the Skull Attack, you're bound to make a mistake. Pippin Dot or Fear Lap are way safer options than Hopus Pocus in my opinion. For the last section, obviously don't fight Mr. Chimes and fight either Pirouletta or Mangosteen. I would personally fight against Mangosteen since he is just so simplistic and doesn't require any charm to beat effectively, unlike Pirouletta with Smoke Bomb. Now that you know your boss selection, it's up to you to go through the gauntlet and defeat each boss you picked. If there is an extra heart on a boss you don't usually fight, if it's not Mr. Chimes, then it's completely up to you whether you want to risk it or not. Although I would personally not if you're using Smoke Bomb, since the boss gauntlet is already pretty easy. Now that you've finally made it to the end, you'll have to fight King Dice himself. His attack is pretty simple. He'll put his hand on either the left or right side of the screen and cards will appear from it moving towards the opposite side of the screen. Some of the cards will be pink and parryable, and you'll need to parry from card to card to avoid taking damage. Just so you know, you can parry the same card more than once, so feel free to keep on parrying the same card until you're comfortable moving on to the next one. Also, once you dash, you can't dash again until you hit the ground, just so you know. When he is starting his attack, give yourself some space and get ready to jump and dash to the first pink card you can reach, and start rhythmically parrying the cards. When you're going to move on to the next pink card, make sure to move right as you parry the card you're currently on, so you have the most amount of time to make it to the next card. You rinse and repeat this until you finally beat King Dice. Hopefully this video was of some help to you, and if it was, I'd appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and share this video to help out the channel. With all of that, best of luck with your S-Ranks.